Alright, I'll try and re-record, but for some reason the first video did not take. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am right. Uh, it's fucked up. But, anywho, don't worry about it. Alright. I'm trying to re-record. Uh, I'm looking sharp. I got a freshly clean, uh, freshly shaved face, and, uh, I'm wearing a nice, uh, collared shirt, so, uh, check it out. Uh, anywho. Um, alright, the Dulce, Dulce, New Mexico, the Dulce Base. You guys want to hear more about that? Lord knows I do, so, uh. Alright, um, uh, hmm. After all, the Dulce Base is a secret facility. These people are very good at what they do. They do not tell the truth about unfortunate people that end up in Nightmare Hall. I worked with aliens. With that in mind, you should get the idea of the secrecy and the security at that place. Yes, I know. This was the cat, the usual hospital. Okay, that's right. But one, uh, shit. That's right. I already went over. Okay. So anyway, uh, what I'm... What I'm going over right now is an interview of, uh, just in case you just tuned in, an interview of a whistleblower from the Dulce Base. Uh, the guy claimed to have been a chief of security. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> as I always say on the show, use your own discretion. Um, I wasn't there, so I don't know. I'm just reporting some interesting stuff I found, so... Use your own discretion. Do your own research. Question. Did any of the working cast join in the revolt? And by working cast, he means working cast of the reptoids. Apparently, the reptoids have a very similar structure to humanoids in that we have working classes, elite classes, middle classes, uh, lower classes, uh, and whatnot. So, but uh, when he says working cast, he means the working cast of the reptoids. Did any of the working cast join in the revolt? Could you give me some names? A few of the reptilian janitorial crew let us know that they knew we were attempting to sabotage the work going on in the 6th and 7th levels. And for some reason I'm reminded of Snake Man from Canada. I don't... <laughs> Anywho... Uh, one of them with the name uh, Xiao secretly formed a small group of reptoids with the same mindset as my group. Note. Take note of the similarity between this scenario and the NBC miniseries V, which is now available. Uh, well, no, I think now it's on Fox, actually. Uh, so, there you go. He had connections in Hollywood and had written a motion picture script, which was in turn seen and borrowed without permission by an NBC employee and rewritten as a miniseries. The show was based on reptilian humanoids from Sirius B who had come to Earth under the guise of benevolent human-like space brothers to bring a new order of universal peace. In reality, they had a secret agenda to rape the planet Earth of her resources and steal her people for biological sustenance. Mmm, yummy, yummy. The agenda was being contested by a human resistance who refused to fall for the reptilian's facade. And these resistors in t uh, were in turn working with a secret fifth column of reptilians who did not agree with their leader's agenda for planet earth yeah believe it or not if you buy into all this stuff there there actually is a certain segment of the retroid population that really does not want to go along with uh, capturing the humanoids and killing them all uh, they uh, i don't know it might be part of the good shepherd uh, philosophy but let me put it this way say you're a shepherd of sheep which if you buy into this, these reptoids claim to be, to some extent, they claim to be our, our shepherds, uh, and we are their uh, food source, i.e. slave force, what have you. Would you want to kill all the humans, or would you want to keep 
keep a herd alive. Uh, therein lies the conundrum. Okay, so Sheal, uh, the reptoid, took upon himself the danger of informing me. He was an he was open as possible in a unique situation. On the day I found out about it, I was inspecting a camera near an exit tunnel. He approached, stooped down. The, the tall reptiloids average uh, about seven to eight feet in height, according to most witnesses. <sighs> Seemingly scraping some non-existent dirt, and he quietly said, uh, A few of us agreed that you are singular in your interest in missing human reports. If true, walk away, I'll reach you. If it's untrue, destroy my life now. My heart almost leaped out of my chest, but I silently walked toward one of the wide halls. For the rest of my life, I'll remember those words. It was the first time I knew reptilians could have individual thoughts and opinions. Basically, they formed a uniform front with a small variety of interests. Or at least that was what we thought we had thought. It was a couple days before I heard from him again. As we walked beside as he walked beside me in the sixth level's infamous hall, I heard him say, Enter the next tunnel on the sixth level north after your shift. The next few hours were long and filled with thoughts of betrayal or worse. But I shouldn't have worried. I contacted one of the original nine resistance resistance men and let him know just in case. Gordon wanted to go with me, but I convinced him to wait a few feet from the exit and pretend he was having trouble with his cart, electric like a golf cart. When I got there, there were three of them. Uh, Shial. Once again, this reminds me of Snake Man <laughs> from Canada. Formerly introduced Fashia and Huamshia. Name based word is Shia or assist. With that, I quickly grabbed Gordon from the hall, and the five of us talked and walked in the dark tunnels for about three hours. After that day, the joined resistance group got bigger and bolder. Ultimately, it ended when a military assault was initiated via the exit tunnels, and they executed anybody on their list, human or reptilian. We fought back, but none of the working cast had weapons. Nor did the lab workers. Only the security force and a few computer workers had flash guns. It was a massacre. Everyone was screaming and running for cover. Uh, the halls and tunnels were filled as full as possible. We believe it was the Delta Force because of the uniforms and the method they used uh, that chose to hit at shift change, an effort that killed as many as named on their list. Note, if Thomas Castillo is correct in his assertion, then based on his overall revelations, as well as the revelations of others such as Robert Lazar, Phil Schneider, etc., the Dulce Wars were the result of at least five overlapping factors or scenarios which converged um, at more or less the same time or played into each other. This may have also involved a conflict of interest within MJ-12 itself and apparently involved different security forces including the Delta Force, Black Beret, Air Force, Blue Beret, Secret Service, FBI Division 5, CIA Stormtroopers, and Dulce Base Security. The various factors which seem to have played into the Dulce Wars would include uh, animosity towards the Greys for their slaughter of several scientists and security personnel in the Groom War below Area 51, three years earlier as described by 
Former MJ-12 Special Studies Group agent Michael, Michael Wolf. Accidental encounters between aliens and human construction workers and security forces near Dulce as described by Phil Schneider. An attack on the Dulce base resistance that was apparently ordered by diehard collaborators and deep level intelligence as described by Thomas Costello. An attempt to rescue several of our best scientists who had been captured by the aliens after they had discovered the Grand Deception, involving a violation of the established treaties that is the permanent abduction of thousands of humans to the Dulce and other bases for God only knows what purposes. As described by John Lear, could it be MJ-12, uh, PI-40, was unaware of these abductees, yet their superior agency, the Black Monk Magic Agency, was aware and had agreed to an actual exchange of human life for intelligence. And another factor would involve a dispute over whether human security personnel could carry flash guns as opposed to machine guns. All of these were apparently contributing factors to the altercations which raged throughout the Dulce base beginning in 1979. We to this day do not know who betrayed us. Gordon Ennery ran beside me as we ran into the third level exit tunnels and he died when several bullets slammed into his back. I vaporized that assassin and kept running. And I'm still running. Gordon will be remembered. Question. Tell me more about the flash gun. Is it difficult to operate? Or is it like the weapon on Star Trek uh, that can stun or kill on different modes? Answer. It is an advanced beam weapon that can operate on three different phases. Phase 1, like Star Trek, can stun and maybe kill. If the person has a weak heart, on phase two, it can levitate anything no matter what it weighs. Phase three is serious business mode. It can be used to paralyze anything that lives. Animal, human, alien, and plant. Sounds remarkably like a taser, does it not? On the higher position, on the same mode, it can create a temporary death. I assure you, any doctor would, clear, would certify that person is dead, but their life essence lingers in some strange limbo, some kind of terrible state of non-death. In, in one to five hours, the person will revive slowly. First, the bodily functions will begin, and in a few minutes... Consciousness followed with full awareness in that mode. The alien scientists reprogram the human brain and plant false information. When the person awakes, he recalls the false information as information he gained through life experience. There is no way for a person to learn the truth. The human mind remembers and believes completely the false data, or data, whatever you want to call it. If you attempt to inform them, they would laugh or get angry. They never believe the truth. Their mind always forgets the experience of programming. Or maybe they laugh because they don't want to get thrown into the fucking nut word. Uh, if you know what I'm saying. Sometimes people play along, go along to get along, right? Uh, you asked if the flash gun is difficult to operate. A two-year-old child could use it with one hand. It resembles a flashlight with black glass conical inverted lens. On the side, there are three recessed knobs and three curved grooves. Each knob is sized differently. The closer the knob to the hand, the less the strength. It's that simple. Each knob has three strengths, also with automatic stops at each position. Position. The strongest position will vaporize anything that lives. That mode is so powerful, it will leave no trace of what it vaporized. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we're going to take a break. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me on this special Monday show. And um, after the break, um, I think we're going to try and drag some people onto the show and have a little bit of a roundtable discussion.